Okay, so this is part two then of uh, building your T-Rex Super Combo Kit. Um, one thing that I did that I'm not going to show because it's super easy is uh, just prepared the landing gear part. Um, this kit actually came with black stoppers in for the ends of them, which I think looks really nice. Um, nothing real special here. Um, just make sure you do the uh, do the um, logo facing out, so people, you know, I think it makes the helicopter look a little bit better. And um, I put the little rubber things inside the gear because otherwise they fall off and you lose them. So these are handy, um, right where they are. Then I just held it up against the frame to get the distance from there to there set about right and um, then you just put them on a table that's pretty straight and you just kind of push them around until they're until they're flat. Um, I'm not actually going to glue these. You need to put a little bit of glue um, right in here to hold them in place but um, I'm not actually going to do that until I've got the whole thing put together and I can line everything up. You know, I don't have them equal yet so um, set those aside and we'll work on that later. Uh, this video is about mounting the servos and getting those set up so that they're all straight. Um, it's the same as just about any other kit. Um, one thing that I did was I set up a T-Rex 250 model in my Spectrum radio and went ahead and bound this receiver to that model. Um, and then I've got a receiver battery this is just a you know, receiver battery from like a glow airplane or something. Um, 4.8 volt pack. And uh, I like to use that when doing setup and stuff. That way, you know, you can use this for a really long time. You're not burning a lipo. And um, if you happen to have the motor plugged in, um, this will run the motor, but it won't run it very fast. There's not enough voltage to make the motor really run. So it's kind of a safer way to do the setup. I like using the receiver pack for that. Um, it's real simple. Just plug it into the battery slot on the receiver and uh, everything will work. Alright, so I've dry fitted the servos in here. I'm not going to screw them down yet um, because I need to take them out and do some other things. I may actually shorten these wires or something like that depending on where the receiver and everything ends up. So I'm just fitting them in here. Make sure they're seated all the way. Um, usually I like to actually do this step with the servos out of the helicopter but on this one the um, the servos are not exactly mounted straight um, except for the elevator one they're mounted at a little bit of an angle here so um, you do have to actually have them sitting in here to make sure you get the horns on straight um, and that's what we're gonna do first so um, first thing you want to do is I've set up the, the standard model helicopter in my radio just using basic helicopter settings and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the battery and um, that will activate them and uh, you know check to see if they're all moving and they all work um, elevator so Got those all working. The elevator servo actually goes in here um, like this. It goes in like that, and it is perfectly straight against, you know, relative to the shaft. It's it's a 90 degree one. So that one I can set up without actually screwing it on. Um, so I'm going to show that first. First, I just take these find a servo horn. I got three of these ones like this uh, come with the servos and try to see uh, with the servos centered put your radio into throttle hold mode and move the collective stick up to the 50 percent mark so that you know that you're getting a 50 percent pitch um, 
and that'll be the center position of the swash plate as it moves up and down. So make sure that you've got your radio set to that before you decide to, you know, center your servo horns. Um, the way I do that is I've got a DX7 radio here, and it's got a real handy feature that um, when you're in the throttle hold mode, um, it shows you, uh, you can dial in the pitch curve, and it will show you as you go up and down it'll show you where you're at and so you can move that in until you get exactly 50 percent it's really sensitive there okay so when that's 50 percent output um, set the radio aside so you don't tweak it or anything and um, servos will hold in that spot um, and later on when we set up the swash plate that's going to be the center point where you want to have zero pitch on the blades and so on so it's very important that you get that point set right and you get the servo horns on um, straight relative to that point so I'm just going to try one here stick it on there and uh, that was a lucky guess got one that's pretty straight already so that's the elevator servo um, one thing you can do to make sure that it is straight is line it up with the little holes so if both ends of the servo horn are pointing at these little holes you can make sure it's straight with the servo case itself so it looks like that one is just about as perfect as it can be so I'm not going to do anything with that one I'll go ahead and start on these other ones here so again I found one that was pretty close there um, what you want to do is get it so that this line here going across here is at 90 degrees to the main shaft direction um, but it's kinda hard to see that so you know find another line somewhere to line it up I'm gonna use like this little hole right here because I think that bit right there is actually um, straight with the frame so use sub trim in your radio and uh, this is the left hand side servo so that's going to be my pitch servo um, and just use sub trim in the radio until you get that servo horn lined up straight there uh, it's pretty good already uh, but I think I'm just going to use a little bit maybe three or four clicks of sub trim on that one um, if you want you can hold up a ruler to it and extend that line out and see if it actually is you know parallel with this one here so you know you can hold that up against the holes in the servo horn and kind of eyeball it and see if it's straight or not okay so I got all three of my servos centered um, you can see that one there, that's the aileron servo, that one will be right side, the left side one, perfectly straight, then also the elevator, also straight. If the horns don't go on straight, try putting it on backwards, you know, try flipping it and putting it the other way, um, or you can also use sub trim in your radio to uh, affect that channel and to get them centered. Pretty important that they be at 90 degrees when you start out, 90 degrees to the shaft. Otherwise, as your swash plate goes up and down, you're going to get different amounts of travel. So, as the servo horn spins around, it goes in a circle. And at the end, it's not actually pulling as far um, just because of the way that the circles work. So it's not going to be not going to be level at the extremes if you don't get them centered. They won't move together 
and there will be all sorts of other problems. So what I'm going to do at this point then is just unplug the receiver and leave those servos in the spot where they were. Okay, and I'll unplug all the servos themselves from the receiver as well because what I'm going to do is I got later on I got to try and figure out how to route the wires um, through the frame so that they're all tied away from the moving parts and everything. So, and I think I might actually shorten some of the wires. Okay, one thing I like to do when I get the um, when I get the servos figured out how they're going to be centered is um, I like to go ahead and cut off the part that I'm not going to use. Um, you don't have to do that, but I go ahead and cut that part off and then um, round off the edge with um, nail file and uh, I think that just makes a nicer installation and uh, I'd be willing to bet that on this particular case probably saved a gram and a half of weight or so too so um, on a heli this small that's probably a good thing save that weight and uh, get a little cleaner installation seems a little obsessive but you know you don't get any compliments on your build when you've been sloppy with it so I like to do that. Um, next step is to actually take each of these off and go ahead and put a uh, ball on each one. Um, so I'm going to do those one at a time so I don't get my centered servo arms mixed up or anything. And then uh, come back when I've got those. Alright, next thing you need to do is um, actually screw the balls onto the servo arms and um, on the elevator servo they want you to use this one uh, with the short bits on it and then on the two front cyclic servos you need to use that one it's just got the long end on it little standoff there so um, and all three of them go on to the inside edge of the servo arm so you should just be able to screw them down in yep looks like it's going to catch just fine go ahead and screw them in there just like that and um, I like to put a little bit of CA glue on the end of these just to make sure that they stay uh, forever and ever and aren't going to come apart. 